My name is Kate Doughty and the quilt is called 40 Shades of Green. It's one of those things I felt I should enter the Quilters Guild Challenge because I've done it every year that the show's been on. So it was um, a personal challenge to me to try and make something of this year's theme, which I found a little bit daunting to start with. Um, I didn't know what to do with it, so I ca but I tend to improvise things. I kind of work as I go along. So with this piece, I actually collected up a lot of different green fabrics from a large pile of fabrics which I've accumulated over the years and just pieced them together. So I pieced the green pieces together first and then I applied the whole lot to a calico background and then added lots of stitch and that's really all there is to it. But there are 40 different pieces of fabric. I think I must just have had a lot of green <laughs> that needed using up. <laughs> I seem to have used green in a lot of quilts recently over the last few years, so I have quite a collection of greens, a lot of which I've painted or dyed, or, but some of which are commercial ones that I've had in the stash for years. <laughs> well, the green pieces are pieced into one long strip, then the whole lot is a appliqued by hand onto the background is then stitched across into place down vertical lines all the way through then there is a lot of quilting over the neutral spaces followed by a lot more quilting in greens over the green areas which I've taken out beyond the borders in order to make it look a bit more interesting and because I'm not very good at making stuff stick into particular spaces so I kind of let it stretch up and down quite a lot. <laughs> it's not so terribly complicated really, it's a very easy thing to do. I think often simple is better. That's my approach. I think it's always worth putting your work on display and as I tell people all the time if people don't put quilts into quilt shows there won't be any quilt shows so they really have to keep doing that. I think I've met an awful lot of people over the years through quilting and I've moved around to some extent to different parts of the country and each time it's been quilting that has been a connection to getting to know people in the area in which I've then moved to. I worked, I, I mean I've always stitched, like a lot of women of my age we grew up sewing and knowing how to sew and I can't remember a time when I didn't know how to sew. So I've always done all sorts of things. Quilting I came to much later. I suddenly signed up for a class which turned out to be a city and guilds in patchwork and quilting. And just by chance, I saw that in the local edu adult education catalogue and um, I subscribed and I went along and, and found it was a city and guilds course, which I hadn't realized. I just thought it was a sort of leisure class. And that got me hooked really. And at the time I was working as a graphic designer I was spending all my time by then sitting in front of a computer screen instead of working hands-on on a drawing board, which I had been doing when I first started. Um, and the quilting was getting back to doing something very much more hands-on and getting escaping from the computer screen. I find it difficult to know. Each one is a different piece and different things inspire me. I do quite enjoy the odd challenge like this one because it kind of makes you push and try something that you wouldn't otherwise have tried. But I do also like, um, I guess, creating pieces that express the area in which I live, because I'm lucky enough to live in a beautiful part of the country where the environment is very inspirational. <laughs> oh, go for it. <laughs> and don't be frightened as well. Just don't be frightened of it. People don't, people get too scared and they won't, um, they won't, they're too frightened to experiment and they need to just keep at it and practice and practice and practice with the machine. <laughs> that is essential.